Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Fortress America Elections. Please hit that subscribe button and like this video. It helps out the channel a lot. And uh, I've got a fresh new look on the logo here. Um, and uh, thanks for all the support so far. But let's get into today's video, which is the new Monmouth poll that just came out a few days ago showing uh, Glenn Youngkin, the Republican candidate for Virginia governor, is making some serious gains in the state. And this, this race could come down to the absolute wire. And uh, what was really interesting about this Monmouth poll is it's showing uh, a big gain for him from September and August. So you see uh, the, this marks a shift from prior polls where the Democrat held a five-point lead, 48 to 43 in September, 47 to 42 in August, and now uh, it's in a dead heat, 46 to 46. It's also important to, important to mention that McAuliffe has not been polling above 50% in basically any polls that we've seen uh, for the last three or four months, and so that's definitely not a good sign for him. Youngkin definitely has the momentum on its side, on his side. If you look at some of the early, you know, early voting results, where people are turning out at, they're not really turning out in North Virginia, and uh, hopefully the ones who are are upset about sort of the education debacle and things Terry McAuliffe has said. So this is really exciting news. This is really big for the Youngkin campaign and for the Republicans as a whole. In a, you know coming up in 2022, if you look at 538, they got some of the most recent polls totaled here. This currently gives McAuliffe a two and a half point aggregate lead, based on the data that's in. Um, these are the most recent polls we had. This one showing McAuliffe up four. But if you just look at the trends about which polls, you know where are they going? What direction are they moving? Well, plus seven. There's no more of those, um, except for this one here. All we're basically seeing which I don't know why it lists two different polls. That's kind of interesting. This must be the adjustment to McCullough plus five, but it's trending in Youngkin's direction. So it went from a much wider gap. I mean, you can just see that here. Youngkin was in the low 40s. Well, he's starting to get up to the mid 40s. McCullough is not really gaining a lot of support at this point. I mean, one point he was up nearly eight in the aggregate just two and a half months ago. Well, now it's seriously tightened. And so that's what you want to see. You want to see that momentum going in your direction. The only other poll we have right now is the data for progress poll here, which uh, shows McAuliffe up five. But if you look at data for progress, let's look at their website. Okay, what do you see? What looks glowy here? Climate ambition and equity, Green New Deal, progressive institutions, coronavirus recovery, uh, things like that. Um, doesn't really seem like they'd be an unbiased polling firm. It's in the name data for progress. So um, and they only have McAuliffe up five. I mean, if it was up 10, you could put some stock in that. But up five doesn't mean a lot to me. Um, I think that probably adjusted shows McAuliffe up one or two. So this kind of stays with my current prediction where I kind of moved it. I thought maybe McAuliffe would be winning, would win by three. I think it's going to be closer to more to two to two points is kind of kind of what I'm thinking right now. Like a 50.5 to 48.5 or a 50 to 48 victory. That's just my current projection. It depends on how much third-party vote there is. I know there's a progressive candidate running. Someone else mentioned I wasn't really talking about the third-party candidates. Polls tend to overestimate third-party candidates as voters like to think they're going to vote for that candidate, but when it really comes down to it, uh, they end up voting more along partisan lines. But uh, even if the third-party vote's up to 4%, um, you know, it could be a 48-46 or a 49-45 victory. It's just going to depend, or not 49-45, 49-47 victory for McAuliffe, but I don't know if he'll break 50% in his victory. What I do, I mean, we are seeing the polls narrow. We are seeing the momentum move in Youngkin's direction. And at this point, you know, I'd say McAuliffe is 60% chance of winning, but Youngkin has a serious chance of winning. And if you listen to 538's podcast on the Virginia race, and do you believe that Democrats be worried? Well, should be worried? Well, they do believe that they should be worried, especially with how much of a partisan lean uh, you know, Virginia has towards the Democrats, um, it's not a good sign for 2022, even if Youngkin gets within four or five. Like, if he, if Youngkin gets under five points, uh, you know, 51-46 victory, I'd call that a victory for the Republican Party because that is movement from 2020. But I think he's going to do better than that. At the moment, I would need to see probably three or four or five polls in a row show Youngkin either within two or nearly tied 
to think that he, you know, he has a greater than 50% chance of winning. I'm not quite in that boat yet. Um, I still think McAuliffe is favored. I still think he'll probably win by around two to three points. That's just my current projection. I know I support America first candidates like, uh, like Yunkin or Republicans, but I still have to have a based opinion here when it comes to these races. So I, I can't rack my credibility. I have to, uh, predict what I see based on the data. And that's what I currently see so far. Do I think Yunkin can win? Absolutely. Do I think he can start to, you know, come back as these polls narrow? I, t I totally believe so. It's not like it's a lock from a call if it's definitely not. Um, I still, I just see him winning by a couple points right now, but if we do get some more polling data that shows more tied races or within a few, or even Yunkin up a few, um, you're going to start to see my opinion change. You're going to start to see my prediction change. You know, we're a week out, week and a half out from this race. Next week, as we get close to the race, a few days out, I'll give you my full on prediction, which will be all the counties, the vote totals, what I think exactly is going to happen and what the night's going to look like. So you'll get the full breakdown of my prediction and we'll, we'll see how I do, but there's still plenty of data to come in and, uh, and tell us what's going to happen in the Virginia governor's race. So, um, that is my prediction so far. That is the analysis of what is going on in this new poll. Let me know what you think down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.